Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our webinar this morning on how you can launch 100,000 pages um, within 90 days to accelerate your customer acquisition. Um, you'll see some of our uh, of the clients there on the left hand side. Uh, today, um, you've got Joel Bloomer, uh, JB as he's known, uh, mm -hmm. Chief Operating and Financial Officer, and he leads our growth and insights teams and uh, co-leads the product vision. And myself, Rob, uh, I'm the commercial director here and I'm responsible for cultivating and leading the client relationships across the globe. So a little bit about Longtail UX, if you don't know who we are, we're on a mission to reinvent how businesses connect people to products. And we talk about this in a sense that uh, we can apply your creativity at speed and scale to, for a new future of work for go-to-market professionals, uh, particularly in e-commerce, but also in lead generation. The Lux customer acquisition platform is the ultimate bolt-on, uh, an upgrade to your website. And we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about that in more detail today. JB. Yeah, great. Thanks, Rob. Uh, and thanks everyone for, for joining us today. Uh, first, first, we thought we'd start out with um, kind of a super high level schematic, I guess, of, of where we sit in the world, uh, kind of anticipating some questions we get, where do you guys, like, what do you guys actually help me with? Uh, this is an example we use. So one of our clients uh, in Australia, actually, Woolworths, their um, largest grocer, uh, actually in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, they'd be probably third or fourth uh, if based in the US. Uh, so one of our clients, where do we sit? Uh, we kind of try to divide the world into two different areas, on-site and off-site. Uh, looking at the top on-site, this is going to be the more direct traffic typically to your website. Uh, so it could be direct, they enter your um, direct URL, they search for your brand, so a branded search, or what you might call a short tail. Uh, and even with the short tail like salted butter here, they tend to be going direct to your website. They, sort of know where they're going to land when they search. Uh, where we sit is more what you might call offsite or what we call customer acquisition. And this tends to be more in the long tail. So your three, four, five, six keyword searches, uh, they're looking for products you sell, but not necessarily looking for you. Uh, this is where we sit. And this is where the Lux customer acquisition platform with pages that look exactly in behave, feel exactly like yours, help to redirect consumers to your website. So on-site versus off-site, you still have to do on-site optimization. We help you do the rest to acquire customers. Uh, we'll get into a lot more detail here. So stepping back, uh, kind of maybe first, why do we exist? Uh, what is the problem in the world that we are working on solving? Uh, to really summarize it in kind of a, a big, maybe bold statement, uh, we feel online go-to-market hasn't changed in 10 years. Uh, there's been, of course, little evolutions. Everyone keeps getting a bit better at what they do. Uh, but the overall goal of online go-to-market or the method hasn't really changed. And there's kind of three different ways we feel that's evidenced. Uh, one is there's still a lot of budget wasted on ads that don't convert. Um, it's kind of Almost your go-to go-to-market plan is if you want more traffic, more conversion, you spend more on Google. But we all know the more you spend at some point, you get diminishing return on investment or even negative return. Uh, a second big problem is cramming campaigns into suboptimal websites. Uh, so we work with a lot of marketers, a lot of heads of e-commerce, might come up with an amazing campaign to acquire new customers. Perfectly designed, they know exactly what's going to work but then they have to force that into a website that's not conducive. So kind of a, a square peg into a round hole problem. To fix it, you have to become what we call a Jira jockey. We'll talk more about that later, but that's basically working with your developer team. Um, and we think there's a better way. And then last large problem is dismissing massive opportunities in organic marketing and long tail. Really, truly amazing to us that SEO is still often considered a cost center. Uh, we think that has to change. The data says it should change. ROI and that channel is good. Uh, it's just actually hard to measure and hard to capture. And that's, that's a, a big thing that we help with. 
So there's lots of different challenges or reasons why go-to-market really hasn't changed massively in the last 10 years. Uh, this McKinsey survey helps to helps to summarize it really in the three different areas, uh, data, tools, and speed. If you don't have the right data, it's, it's kind of hard to know, um, hard to invest, hard to know what return you're going to get on that investment, what areas to target. If you don't have the tools, you don't get the data. Uh, if you don't have the data, you don't necessarily need the tools you need. So the first and second kind of feeding off each other. And then if you don't have the, the flexible platform or the supporting platforms like ours on top of your platform, uh, it could be really hard to get to market quickly. So you might have a great idea, but you just can't execute on it. And these are our three areas that we help with. So stepping back again to long tail, um, most of you on the call probably you've heard about long tail. Long tail has been around for for really a, a long time. Uh, the concept isn't necessarily new, but maybe just to define it so everyone's across. Uh, long tail is basically consumers that are looking, they're entering multiple keywords into the search. Uh, and data shows they have a high prob higher probability of converting because the more words that you put in that search, the more specific your search is and the more likely it is you know exactly what you're looking for. So you enter that search, you land on a relevant page, you are more likely to convert. Um, often people will think, still think of long tail as just a niche opportunity, which if you look at any one of those individual searches, maybe, but if you take it in aggregate, over half, say 50 to 70% of searches are actually long tail. So long tail is a massive opportunity, even if each individual search is not that large. Uh, and looking at the call out on the right, this is actually a client of ours, some actual actual data, spending a lot of money on, uh, on search, um, tens of millions of searches landing on their site, but they're not converting often, even though they actually do have the products. And it's a lot of lost revenue. So this is actually a large opportunity. Now we've got a couple of polls today. Um, and the first one is what percentage of your company's budget do you spend on targeting the long tail? And there should be a pop up that will magically appear on your screen. So is it less than 25%, 20 to 50, 50 to 75, or more than 75, or you just don't know? And our wizards in the background will make that happen for you. So if you can just quickly answer the, uh, that for us. Uh, also, uh, there's a Q&A button down the bottom. If you want to ask any questions specific to yourself, we'll be happy to answer anything today throughout the presentation. So don't be scared to ask a few questions. And also, if you there's a chat button down there as well, if you uh, just want to have general chat. Um, but if you've all had a crack at that, we'll be able to see the results uh, live, hopefully. Or I will. So we've got 50% of people saying that they spending less than 25% of uh, the budget is spent on the long tail and around about the same um, don't know. So uh, interesting, it is difficult to know um, uh, when you're building out pages or looking to make a SEO a style optimizations for the long tail, it's really difficult to know exactly how much budget is being spent there. Hmm. Yeah, no, and, and that's um, for perspective, that's that's a pretty common response, um, common spread. R Rob would see this all the time in his um, kind of sales meeting, sales engagements, where most people are familiar with the long tail, but really there's there's no specific strategy around it. Uh, and well, this is, yeah. Yeah, I think as well that if you don't know how much you're spending on it, and you actually it's really difficult to calculate how much you're spending on it, you don't know what the return is. There's, there's no way of, of measuring the return. So difficult to uh, measure how much money you're spending on it and difficult to measure how much effects that's had generally on, on site, something that we can solve. Right. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for Ron. So why, why is that common? Um, you know, why is there this problem of, of targeting the long tail? Um, and, and really what's the experience of most consumers, I guess, if you're not targeting the long tail specifically. Uh, so this is a very simple example, but not a, um, not a unique example by any means. This happens frequently. Uh, we're looking at Lisa the consumer. And if we just go through an example, quick journey, 
She's looking for a floral dress with sleeves in Denver. So this, as we kind of defined before, this is definitely a long tail search. She has a plan, something she wants to do and, and she needs something and she's looking for it now. She knows what she wants. So she enters that uh, into Google search, Bing search, doesn't matter. Goes there, uh, see some results, floral dresses. There's clearly a kind of a promise in that search result. She has answered a search, there's a result. It sounds exactly what I need. She clicks on it uh, and then sees a page where actually only one of 12 or 20 or whatever it is, only one search result is actually relevant to her search. Not fulfilling the promise of the search result, pretty disappointing experience. Um, she's not happy, she's landed on your website, not getting a great experience, that's not good for your brand. Uh, it's probably directed her to some sort of broad like dresses category page. So not specifically targeting floral dress uh, with sleeves. So she's not happy, very frustrating. So she goes back to Google. So she bounces quickly. Uh, and the problem with this, besides bad experience, bad brand, you probably actually have what she's looking for. You just didn't actually have the page there for her to land on. Uh, so what do you do in, in response to that? Um, in this, so we'll say Mark the Marketer as an example Lux user. Uh, he wants to accelerate growth into new categories. He wants to fix this problem Lisa's experiencing. What does he do? Uh, more often than not, you throw more money at Google. You kind of accept, well, my website, my platform is what it is. I can't do a lot about that. I'm not converting great, but I need to generate more revenue. So I throw more money at Google. And I'm kind of accepting that low conversion rate, hoping to offset with traffic. Extremely common response, but you know, not... Um, not the most efficient, not the most ROI effective, not the most creative really, but that's, that's often the, the solution Mark will go with. Um, or you could become a Jira jockey, which is a bit of a, a tongue in cheek term we come up with for people that do actually try to fix that problem. Uh, they start engaging with their developer team. They recognize they don't have the pages, so they wanna build those pages, but they get stuck in these queues that are made to build software uh, instead of Mark focusing on actually generating revenue. So these are probably the most common responses and neither of them is, is particularly compelling. So we're on to poll question two. Um, how many landing pages were created on your company's website last year specifically to achieve your marketing goals? So less than 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 10,000 or more than 10,000 or I've really got no idea how many uh, were created uh, but as if by magic the poll question should come up if you can just click in there and answer and again uh, don't be afraid to ask questions in the Q&A box um, down below um, we'll answer them either at the end or throughout the presentation I've um, got one in, a couple in there already so I will be jumping into those shortly so and if we can now have a look at those results. So again, see this very regularly, um, either don't know or less than a hundred is the majority of, of mm. everybody because it's difficult, right? You're producing a static page for demand that's coming in. You've got to, uh, you've got to get it done by engineering. You've got to have it fitted into the, uh, the menu. It's got to, uh, be in the sitemap, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's tough. Uh, how seeing um, a couple of answers here, of uh, you know, a, a low percentage um, of people say they've got between a hundred and a thousand, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, Joel's now going to continue telling how, with the Lux platform, you can create over a hundred thousand new pages within just ninety days. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and well, just to reiterate, that's it's a pretty common response to be in that sort of range. Uh, and again, coming back to like thinking about some of our discovery presentations that we run for um, for prospects or clients that show interest in our product, when we start to explain what we do and the types of pages, sometimes we get the response that oh, you know, we we do that sort of thing. Uh, but then we ask this question: Is well, how many how many pages were you able to do that for? And 
you know, sometimes it's 50 or 60 on, on a website that has 100,000 pages, or they might have a product suite of, of 20,000 SKUs. 50 pages is, is great, but it, it's not going to help you capture the long tail. It's not incremental enough to drive growth. Uh, and that's, that's really where we can help. Uh, so coming back to Lisa, the consumer, and trying to, to fix her experience and, and the impression that she gets, she gets from your website. Uh, so basically the same search. So we're looking for floral dresses in Denver. Uh, on the left, you can see the results that she gets across Google Shopping, paid, um, and organic. Except this time, there's a promise in the search. Uh, looks great. She's excited when she sees these search results. She clicks on that. Uh, one of those links, and she this time she lands on a Lux Smart Page. Uh, this Smart Page has all of the products you have that are actually relevant to that search. Uh, this is a template that we develop in very close collaboration with you or your UX team or whoever needs to sign off on this. Uh, looks, feels, behaves exactly as your website, except now it's actually showing all the products you have that are relevant to that search. So she's excited. She's choosing from a few right there on basically your website. Uh, she clicks on one of those and clicks through to your already existing product page. Now, if she does click through, and let's say this summer, summer floral dress on the right isn't exactly what she wants, and she backs up uh, a level, she's going to the Lux Smart page instead of back to Google. So most likely she had seen something she wants. She goes deeper into your website. Even if she comes back, she's still basically in your ecosystem. And this is the beauty of the Lux Smart page. So I've got a question here, JB. Um, yeah. How does this work for services and lead gen? Hmm. Um, and I can answer that on this slide, that's why I waited. Um, rather than having dresses there, we would use um, content uh, that you have uh, and pull together a multi-content experience rather than a multi-product experience. If somebody's looking something very specific, maybe it's um, insurance for hairdressers, we would have lots of, or, or, you know, small business insurance for a hairdresser. We might have lots of articles about um, uh, small business insurance and hairdresser insurance and uh, lots of stuff there where the page is still really, really relevant for the search. There's lots of content there, but also there's a widget on there where they can click into a lead gen process that you might have. Mm -hmm. um, and even on the e-commerce levels, we can insert widgets and content onto these pages as well. So it doesn't have to just be products. Um, it can be content only, products only, or a mix of products and content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. Um, and, and then also on these Lux Smart pages, particularly around the organic product, we have what's called Smart Links. Uh, these, these are links on the Lux Smart pages. They link into your website. Uh, they create uh, what we call a contextual proximity. Uh, it's a contextual proximity system, which in very simple words, it just creates a relationship. Um, if we our pages, because they are so relevant and they're so well targeted to search with the great UX, the right products and all that, uh, they tend to rank extremely well, uh, often number one, two or three on Google. They tend to convert at a very high rate. So they help you to build domain authority. Uh, that domain authority can build on the Lexmark page. It feeds into your kind of core native site. Your native site helps to support your group your targeted growth in the long tail, say through a Lux Smart page, and you create this kind of virtuous feedback loop uh, with these smart links around the organic product. Uh, so in what ways uh, are these smart pages useful? I guess, how many ways can we help? Uh, in a very simple way, you look at a search page, you basically have um, one search page, three Lux products. So we can use Lux Smart Pages in shopping, in paid, uh, as well as in organic. In shopping, often what we're doing is we're taking your landing page from a single product to a multi-product, significantly better experience, and they're more likely to, to see something that they need. For Lux Paid, we're creating, uh, it can also be single product to multi-product. Uh, it could be content enriched. We're creating uh, much more relevant products on the page. Um, it's also, you get better 
quality scores and Lux paid because you have a hyper relevant page, lots of benefits there. And then Lux organic, uh, I'll go into it more in a, a few slides here, but because the pages are so relevant or hyper relevant, we like to say, uh, they tend to index much faster, they tend to rank much higher, traffic's better, conversion's better, uh, lots of benefits to having more relevant pages. We have another question, JB, which I might yeah. have while we're on this slide. Um, so do all these landing pages actually exist? <laughs> mm. um, are they generated on the fly? They are not generated on the fly at all. And they do absolutely exist. Now for Google, for Lux Shopping and Lux Paid, they are no index, no follow. And we make as many of those as you require per product. Um, they do exist. They are, uh, we have templates that we build out with you guys. And then every single day or more frequently than that, if required, we take the template and kind of like stamp out um, pages and refresh them from the product feed or content feed that you give us. So every single day, the pages refresh, but they are actual pages and the pages um, are, are absolutely live. Um, we actually uh, pre-cache them as well. So they're already loaded once they've been refreshed. For mm -hmm. organic, it is a little bit different. Uh, they are indexed in Google, obviously, to be able to rank organically. Um, the pages do exist. And when they are crawled by Google, they will have all the products in them. But again, every day or multiple times a day, we refresh the products or content that live within the page. Um, again, they're hyper relevant. Um, don't forget that organically we're not just looking for relevancy you've got to have your uh, domain rating domain authority so um, that's where the smart links come in that JB just talked about um, so yes they do absolutely exist they are a page but they are very dynamic and they're refreshing from your feed every single day hmm. yeah no great question and thanks Rob no worries uh, just a little more detail on, on Google Shopping, uh, yeah, largest kind of ad destination on, on the planet. Uh, but we look at it and say, you know, it, it, it's a great channel, but actually from a customer experience perspective, it's, it's kind of a, a broken funnel. Uh, so if you look at the example on the left, what we're trying to show here is you have a carousel of products. Um, in almost all cases, those links are going to single product landing pages. Uh, so if you are, say, you're Lisa, you're doing this search, you click in, you go in, if that product is what you want, fantastic. Um, but how often is it really that that first product, that one product you see is actually the exact one that you want? Not very often, so you click in, you look at it, you have to click back. Now you're back uh, looking at the Google Shopping Carousel, click on the next one, go in, may or may not be, you go back, and you're what we call pogo sticking. You're going in and out of different websites. Um, you know, these are probably multiple competitors. Let's say you have the product they want, but you're fifth in the carousel. They've seen four other products, maybe four other competitors. Not a good UX for the consumer and, and not great for, for you trying to generate uh, generate revenue and capture new customers. Alternatively, on the right, this is a, a grocery example. It's if instead of landing on a single product landing page, it's a multi-product. And again, it can be content enriched in a number of different ways. They click once to see a lot of different products, much better user experience, much more likely that one of those products on that hyper-relevant page uh, is going to meet their need. And so they convert. Much better UX, you have them in your ecosystem now. Uh, much better way to acquire customers and to spend your ad budget uh, in this matter. In the long tail is waiting for you. Um, you know, as we've we've grown as a company, invested in the product and talked with a lot of customers, you know, we often ask ourselves, like it's just so obvious how big the long tail is and how important it can be to uh, the commercial success really of, of so many companies around the world. Why isn't it being captured? And it's really because people didn't have the tool. Mark the marketer didn't have the tool. Your heads of e-commerce didn't have the tool. Uh, and if you don't have the tool to capture the long tail, you might get it and understand it and want it, but you can't do anything about it. 
So you don't bother with that research. You don't have a strategy around it. Um, that's why as you know, the survey, the poll question we had a moment ago where you're not really thinking about what is the budget that you're spending on long tail because you don't have the tool that actually helps you to capture that. Uh, this is what we bring. This is what the long tail UX platform is uh, with the Lux smart pages and smart links. So we have the tool, we also have the expertise. Uh, we have people internally that have been doing this for years, um, even at large enterprises that we work with and many of you would have heard of, we're often educating their teams that are sometimes even larger than our teams because we've been doing it for so long. We have the expertise, we have the tool. Uh, we've built that up over years and we can help support you. Got a question here, JB. Uh, would this yeah. work for large affiliate retail, Shopify, or WooCommerce sites? Uh, I mean, absolutely. Um, hmm. This is really uh, where the larger the site, the larger the long tail um, opportunity is, and the the better our ability to have more products that exactly match the search or exactly uh, match into the products that they've clicked on in the Google Shopping Carousel. So. Yes, large uh, retailers are really uh, the heart of what we do uh, and the, the long tail opportunity there, the more products you have, the, the more chance you've got to, to, to match a long tail search term with a multi uh, product experience. Hmm. Yeah, and, and actually that, that last point there is good uh, meant to make earlier is people often think about long tail as niche or they think about long tail as something that's really about the the smaller company kind of trying to find their their place in the world uh, but it's actually it's it's exactly the opposite the larger the enterprise um, the more pages or the more products the more content that you have the more long tail that is actually available to you uh, yeah great question uh, so i've mentioned this a couple of times but it's, it's worth reiterating maybe putting just a, a little bit of data behind it uh, this is looking at the organic uh, application again. Our smart pages often rank three to 10 times faster. Uh, and they're ranking faster, generating more revenue because they are so, so relevant. Um, the index quickly, virtually um, all of our pages index with clients and are often generating better, better results um, than the native the core site. You can see a couple different angles here, percent of pages that rank on Google. Uh, that ranked number one on Google, which we know it's about a third of clicks uh, go to that, that first spot. Industry benchmarks, maybe 1%. So you're, you're pretty excited if, if you get that 1% that in there. A uh, couple of examples for us, and this is not uncommon in our client base to see 10% of pages rank in number one. Uh, and then looking at the second row, if you look at high domain rating and ranking in the top 10, so high domain and basically you're on the first page of results. 10% uh, is kind of an industry standard. And we're seeing, as you can see here, um, Myers kind of a, uh, a large department store in APAC, similar to say like a Macy's. Half of the smart pages that we're creating for them are on page one. Uh, I mentioned this earlier at the open. So how is it possible that, that SEO is still very often considered cost center? Uh, when if you look at very high level aggregated kind of industry metrics, um, about half, maybe just under half, depending on the business and industry and all of that uh, of revenue is coming from the organic channel. Uh, but as is probably no surprise to anyone here, corporate budgets are predominantly and in some cases almost exclusively focused on pay. You do some simple math between these data sets and you get to a paid ROI that's eight times. That's great. That's, that's a channel you want to invest in. We, we support paid. We generate like smart pages for paid. You absolutely should continue to do that. Uh, but it's more around the analysis of where does your next dollar go? or if those paid pages aren't converting like you want, what's the next place to invest? You can throw more money at Google, or you can really embrace SEO and have the, the tools and the pages and the expertise that you need to capture this massive ROI opportunity. So we'll jump onto poll question number 
three, uh, what percentage of your company's revenue is generated from organic search or SEO? So less than 25%, 25 to 50, 50 to 75 or more than 75, or I really don't know, um, but as if by magic, here it is, the polls up if you can tick in there and I'll answer a question while we leave that up there um, for the moment. So, uh, <laughs> does it work for smaller sites? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, I'll, I mean, I'll just talk about, we, we have many on the platform, but I'll just talk about a latest um, client that's come on the platform. They currently have, I mean, they're growing. So I think they, when they came on, there were about 4,000 products. Um, I think it's already, at, they're already growing. So um, yes, absolutely. Because of you know, the shopping product works product for product and you can keep growing the number of pages you have um, based on the number of products you have in your Google Merchant Center. For organic, again, yes, we're growing with them, but for them, their domain authority, they see the opportunity of being able to have the, the Lux Smart Links, the interlinking system, and being able to capture, uh, to be able to increase their domain authority and being able to ca capture category searches where people haven't really heard of their brand before, they have a great user experience on site already. And our pages are helping them capture and deliver um, a great UX from that when people haven't even heard of them. They don't have a big above the line budget so they're spending millions on television. So um, yeah, very much so we can work with smaller clients, although uh, I will say some of our <laughs> smaller clients when they came on the platform aren't, aren't, aren't so much, uh, aren't so small now. So good for um, affiliate, good for retail, good for content and, and lead gen as well. So uh, plenty of time there. So for question three, so we'll have a look at the answers. And uh, the majority of people saying that less uh, than 25% of the company's revenue is coming from organic search or um, uh, or SEO. And I think that's because it's really difficult to measure mm -hmm. um, anything that comes in organically on branded search um, or through non-brand and, and comes in organically to the site then absolutely that is revenue it's coming up it's really difficult to measure so mm -hmm. we'll go on to another question of what um if you can just click through there jb for me yeah. um from the entire search budget organic paid and shopping how much does your company spend on organic search on seo and there should be a pop-up there but less than 25 25 to 50 50 to 75 75 or more or you just don't know um and we'll say at this point that our organic product is up 100% measurable and it, and it does it in a very unique way and and if you reach out to us at the end here and, and we can have a, a a demo for you and your your um your site and how long tail ux can work for you we can show exactly how that is measurable to um the dollar to the day and is measurable to every um every kpi that you really measure your current site on hmm. so hopefully now you have all answered poll question and there's a varying degree of answers here but yeah generally less than 25 percent uh is the majority of um uh less than 25 percent of the the search budget goes on organic which we see a lot um i see that the majority of budget well these days the majority of budget has been spent on google shopping for our uh retailers and and google paid and social for um the more lead gen content led um uh, uh, brands um and then there's a, a small percentage of people who just don't really know again it is difficult um it is difficult to know that number um so there hmm. yeah Great thanks rob again. yeah no thanks rob thanks everyone for answering those questions and um yeah as you say rob pretty pretty typical um responses that we see for this um it reflects a lot of conversations that we have with our clients um and i, I would kind of say like it just when we're in these um these chats or discovery the demos and those types of things you can just see there's, there's a feeling that there should be another way um another option other than just throwing more money at google but because the tool's not obvious, or you can't measure it, or it feels a bit faith-based, it can be um, 
a bit daunting uh, to, to go to invest more into SEO. And this, this is something that we want to fix because actually the return there is amazing uh, and we can, we can help capture that. Uh, yeah, so exactly as I was kind of saying, so we talked about Mark's problem before. Um, generally, you throw more money at Google, you want to generate revenue, you kind of not excited about falling conversion rates and bounce or rising bounce rates, that sort of thing, but that's the channel. And so you throw more money at it. You can otherwise try to actually get the pages that you want built. Uh, we saw in the question earlier, most people built 100 pages. Um, some of you that are really overachieving probably relative to peers, you generated a thousand, uh, but to really capture the long tail, depending on size of company, how many products and all that, you actually, you may need tens of thousands of pages. Uh, and so this is, this is the new, new alternative, I guess, that we're, we're bringing. Not just throwing money at Google, not sitting in developer queues instead of working on campaigns, essentially having your own customer acquisition platform bolt onto your existing platform, looks and feels exactly like yours, except it's full of hyper-relevant pages uh, that give consumers exactly what they're searching for. Uh, and then it's, it's dynamic. So as, as the world change, your product suite changes, your strategies change, um, you're managing this to match your campaign instead of always asking for more budget or chatting with the developer team. I've got another question, JB, which yeah. can be answered pretty well on this slide. So why does Google index these pages with so many um, uh, dynamic elements? It seems like it's, uh, you know, it might be similar to what on-site search does. Um, so I'll answer that for the organic product because we're talking about indexing, right? So, uh, so the pages themselves, when indexed by Google, are actually static. So uh, we, I don't want to go into too much tech today, but basically each of the pages, if you imagine a single page, it's getting stamped out from the product feed um, that is exactly matching the organic search term with all the relevant products in it. At the point in time in which Google indexes it, it is a pre-cache loaded page. So um, absolutely, um, uh, Google does index them, um, and and it and it doesn't look like it isn't created on the fly for organic. It just cannot be. Um, we we can't do that. Uh, the second part of the question around about what my uh, uh, website search widget might produce. Well, a couple of things here. Firstly, your loyalists on your site will search very differently on your site to people who don't know your brand, don't, haven't experienced your site before, or have experienced it a long time ago of searching. It's, these pages exactly match what people are searching for when they're looking for a very specific product that, that, that you sell, many of them, um, but they are doing it without your brand and without thinking about where they're going to buy that product from at that point in time. Our Lux Smart page is already sitting there waiting for it, waiting for that search to happen. We know uh, we do a lot of research, um, uh, keyword research to know what pages to produce. And so the number one rank is, is the Lux Smart page, um, and then they come in like that. So very different. Um, I'll keep going with another couple of questions. I'll just check time. Do these live on our servers? Uh, no, uh, they don't, but I'm not gonna go into that too much detail today. Um, we can definitely set up a demo where we can explain all of that um, in more detail. Yeah, the only thing I might add to that last one is, is so uh, we typically serve them. Uh, anyway, yeah, we won't get into the tech, but from Google's perspective and, and just as importantly, I guess, from the user's perspective, it looks and feels and behaves as though it's being served from your website. Uh, it looks like your website. It essentially feels the same as your ecosystem. Uh, and that's really a key, um, a key attribute of the, the pages and the platform that it operates that way. So it's like often in our conversations, we think about it as an alternative to replatforming. You don't have to completely rebuild your native website. This is a bolt-on for you to now actually target the long tail or target new customers. Um, got a, another question here, just just, sure. bolt, just just fits some of that. It says, how does it integrate with Shopify? Well, we integrate with any platform. Um, Shopify, we've done so many times. We actually have plugins for the Lux Smart Links, which makes the implementation nice and easy. But um, 
again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but uh, there's we have a reverse proxy set up. Um, we can uh, obviously go into detail about the technical implementation in a one on one demo, but any platform you're working with, even if it's bespoke, um, we can plug into no problem at all. Um, and another question just quickly uh, on um, services. Uh, often crossing geo targets. So geo targeting and lo local, we call it local searches. Um, we can do either for products or for services um, on both organic and paid. Um, and we do this really, really well. I think um, a great example of this would be for American addiction centers, drugabuse.com. We've got a really localized organic search pages there where people are looking for help they're looking um, and we're really assisting um, American addiction centers with rescues of people. Um, so that's uh, definitely, we've got great case studies there. Again, if you want to reach out after the, um, after the webinar, we can go into a bit more detail about on a one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, Rob. Um, thanks for the question, everyone. Um, so starting to bring it bring it all together, I guess, uh, really what the what the platform we've built bolting onto your platform allows you to do is is really focus on your your creativity uh, and apply that creativity at scale to give you alternative solutions to just asking for more ad budget doing something more creative and, and more productive with it uh, and at unprecedented speed. So you create your own platform. You don't have to re-platform. Uh, if you've been in any of those conversations, re-platforming your website to try and um, better service your campaigns. These are 12-month, 24-month projects, uh, well into seven, eight figures. They always cost more than people expect. And by then, you know, two years from now, who knows what the right campaign is? So you can't wait for that. Uh, with this bolt-on platform, you can you can respond more more dynamically. And just just a few examples. Uh, so most of these are kind of Asia Pacific, uh, Adventa is more South America. Uh, but we're looking at uh, these are these are content opportunities. These are marketplaces. Um, as I said, Myers kind of a Macy's like department store. So these are eBay types, Amazon types. Um, content as well. Rob gave, it, gave a, a great example there. Um, Drugabuse.com. Uh, really, when we say product, uh, often we say content. It can be actual physical things. It can be services. It can be text, blogs, whatever it is that you are looking to distribute and looking to grow your customer acquisition. And maybe you're out of ad budget, struggling with your internal platform. Uh, this, is, this is really where we can help. So I'm actually going to skip over this poll today, um, just because we just do not have enough time. We've got about two minutes left, JB. Um, so we might just skip over this one and continue on with the presentation, I think. We've got a few more slides to get in, and we've got about 90 seconds, JB. Sure. Yeah, we've, well, we've had That's a few just, questions. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, thanks for all the questions uh, along the way and, and keep those keep those coming in. Uh, yeah, I've kind of said this uh, along the way, but really we're looking for companies, probably like many of you uh, on the list here, to join this go-to-market revolution. Uh, as, as we opened, we think go-to-market really hasn't changed meaningfully in the last 10 years, and, and we're looking to change that. Uh, we're already doing it with, with a large list of clients, uh, and our growth is accelerating. And we'd love for you to, well, to help you uh, achieve the same. So maybe coming back to this quickly, uh, hopefully this scheme kind of makes uh, a little more sense than it did at the beginning, and you can see where we sit. Um, we had a few questions there along the way where I think you know, we're kind of getting questions like, are you on-site or off-site? You absolutely have to and should continue to invest in your native website, your on-site. Uh, so when you think about things like on-site search, once you have a consumer on your site, you want them to be able to find what they want uh, or their existing consumer and they go direct to your website. You want them to easily navigate and find what they want. 
where we're really coming in, uh, we often call it a cookie-less customer acquisition. They're not looking for you right now. You have the products, but they're not looking for you. So this is either completely new customer acquisition uh, or it's bringing a customer that's in your database, but they actually weren't looking for that product with you, but you sell it. That's traffic that we can redirect. Uh, so you're either getting new customers or you're getting larger share of wallet uh, with existing customers. Thanks, Toby. And as we come up to about time, um, there is one more question. Can you please explain the pricing? Uh, we won't have time to that today, but again, reach out to us afterwards. Um, we are uh, priced on a price per page um, basis, um, and we can uh, give you some pricing and our approved pricing uh, in, a, in, a, in a chat uh, later. But yeah, do uh, get a custom demo to see specifically how Lux can help uh, identify the long tail for your site and accelerate customer acquisition as hopefully JB has explained very clearly today for you guys. Um, my contact details are there, um, but uh, of course you can always reach out on our website as well. Um, so thank you so much to everybody um, for coming today. And yeah, we'll hopefully speak to you all on a one-to-one -one basis soon. Mm. Thanks everyone.